Okay, so here we are again at uh, the online edition of uh, Job 2020. It's, um, let me have a look, where do I have a clock? Over there. It's uh, 5 p.m. local time here in Cologne, Germany. Um, sun, yeah, not really setting yet, um, but I was wondering if someone switched off the light, but I think it's just clouds. Um, Talking about clouds, clouds obviously uh, consist of Linux machines. Uh, so uh, our next speaker and his topic perfectly uh, match that really, really bad joke. Um, and uh, before we hear some more bad jokes, uh, uh, let me quickly have a look. What do I have to say? Um, uh, um, um, first of all, thank you uh, if you're just uh, jumping into the stream um, for joining us. We are happy to have you on board at this uh, very special online edition of the Jamebeyond Conference. Um, we are live since uh, 17 hours now um, and having another seven to go um, until, uh, yeah, this whole thing here is over. Um, thanks to our sponsor, Polescu's making this online conference possible. Um, if you are going to uh, share your thoughts about this conference, please use the JEP20 hashtag and also um, share some money with, <laughs> no, that was a bad one. Um, uh, as, as we had to cancel the actual in-person event of Jane Beyond, um, we would really appreciate your help uh, in terms of a uh, small donation. Uh, you can find the donation button at jandbeyond.org um, or uh, we also have a paypal.me link in the YouTube chat. Um, if you have any questions during the next upcoming presentation by Marco, feel free to ask them in the YouTube chat uh, whenever you want. I'll happily uh, relay them to Marco. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we can uh, clear up uh, any potential misunderstandings and questions. Okay, Marco. So, now it's uh, it's up to you uh, giving the presentation with the longest title of the day. Um, I'm expecting uh, a, a session packed with, uh, with enlightening content um, because apparently qual the quality of sessions is measured in title length. Um, so well, at least I have 69 slides. So does that count? That's that's perfect. Okay. Uh, so sorry. No. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everybody uh, from wherever you are in the world. I think I've got a kind of a perfect slot in time zone wise. The Americans should be waking up. European uh, Europeans are preparing for dinner, and the Asians just have dinner. Um, so let's uh, continue. Uh, well, if you want to know, find about find out a bit about me. I'm the, at present I'm the tumor production coordinator. You can read up about me on the volunteers portal and reach out on me uh, on uh, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn <clears throat> on social media. So it's uh, Jab Twenty or Jab Twenty Twenty. I so maybe I missed it. Uh, well, you can me there. So, well, obviously, uh, if you're attending the session and saw this long title, I hope it didn't scare you away. But yeah, what's in it for you? Well, uh, what can we do now do after this presentation? Uh, obviously, uh, this is targeted primarily at uh, people using Windows uh, as a software development environment. And that sometimes comes with uh, some challenges. So afterwards, I hope that uh, you will be able to set up an environment where you can use uh, uh, working on simultaneously simultaneous or multiple local websites at the same time, where you can compare them, compare them, and in each uh, <clears throat> website you can use an arbitrary combination of Joomla version, your database engine, and your web server setup. So you could use uh, MySQL or MariaDB as a web server. You could use Alpine, uh, Apache, uh, Nginx with the proxy, whatever, something. I'm just going to highlight the Apache stuff. Uh, we are going to be using uh, targeting for local naming, uh, logical local naming. So instead of targeting a, a website by uh, a local host and some port number, we want to uh, use uh, names that mean something. 
and we want to uh, show you amongst other things to enable local debugging which is kind of nice for uh, developers so yes uh, so what to achieve um uh, there's still a lot of things to do i came up with uh, this pet project i was toying around with it and uh, only one and a half weeks ago i decided to put it into motion and then halfway last week i decided oh it might be something for jab and then i put it forward and then i put myself obviously between a rock and a hard plate to getting the presentation done uh, but i did manage to put uh, 69 slides together uh, but the project is not done uh, i want to add uh, some ssl add some scripting to support you and possibly integrate this whole big mess with the very nice uh, project of um, Alan Moritz Digital Peak DP Docker. And yes, I could have installed Ubuntu on my laptop. And I didn't because, well, that would have been a perfect discussion for the bar afterwards. But unfortunately, we are not live. Uh, so not going to happen today. But I'm sure we'll meet again sometime and we can we do that discussion. Uh, I'm not going to list uh, all of this, but this is just about uh, some of the topics that you are going to see from setting up uh, WSL uh, host files, having a mail log for your local mail catching, um, et cetera, et cetera. So let's dive in. The setting up. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, yeah, you people will probably call that a bit of a Frankenstein uh, is thing, but nowadays Microsoft decided that uh, they do need uh, more support for Linux and they decided to offer uh, Linux as part of Windows. Now that used to work um, relatively nicely in WSL1, uh, but they had some major improvements on WS2, all of which later. Now, Obviously, you can do native development on Windows 10. You just use a MAM server or XAM server or whatever. And then you can still use your Visual Studio Code or your PHP Storms uh, with a note. Uh, there are free licenses available for Joomla contributors. So contact me. And if you're a code contributor, we can make it happen. Uh, anyhow, the native development for Joomla 10 has some drawbacks, limitations. Uh, the ones that bit me the most was that files on a Windows file system are case insensitive. And we have some limitations on development tools. Um, Compose and Node um, are a few of them that uh, throw up tantrums from time to time, and that doesn't make it easier. Uh, and in and by itself, the workflow then differs from the industry standard. So when we're going to try and bridge that development, uh, we can fall back on the fact that Microsoft now embeds Linux into Windows 10. <clears throat> and I specifically say now because that's actually become available in the latest uh, build uh, of Windows 10 this month. Uh, Windows Subsystem for 10 is the second incarnation. It now runs on top of the Windows hypervisor. So they cut out a, uh, a layer. It now does memory reclaiming, so it doesn't harbor the memory. It has a much improved file I.O. performance up to 10, 20 times faster than it used to be. And it has full system call compatibility. So with the system for Linux one, you there were things you couldn't do. <clears throat> now you can do just about anything inside your Linux uh, on your Windows. And you can also choose from multiple distributions, which is uh, always good. In the demo I'm showing, I'm using Ubuntu 18.04. Um, so to, uh, obviously you need to install Windows for subsystem limit, uh, for Linux first. Well, fortunately it's actually built into the Windows 10 version 2004, uh, to, uh, which is available in May, 2020, 
talking about confusing, confusing messages. Um, and previously it was available in the, uh, only to the Windows Insider program. That's where I played with it. So you have to do follow some steps to enable it uh, because it's not enabled by default. So you enable the WSL one platform, then you uh, enable WSL two uh, and make the default for your new distros and installations. On the right hand side, you can see that I'm running 18.04 version two and both my Docker desktop and my Docker data are uh, on version two. Anyhow, this is too big a topic to cover here. So, well, just Google it. Um, Docker desktop is that thing on the Windows side that uh, they call the development environment. So yeah, on the right hand side, I've shown where I can tick the box uh, on uh, to enable your WSL2 based engine. Um, and uh, you can actually uh, in the dashboard start and stop uh, stuff. Uh, but yeah, apart from getting it running, I'm not using it. I'm going the native command line interface way uh, in the distribution because I also like to know what I'm doing. <clears throat> uh, now you have to get into uh, your uh, distribution. Um, in that, uh, to that end, uh, there's a nicely uh, open source project called Windows Terminal that was made by the nice guys from Windows, uh, which is uh, a convenient alternative to a typical terminal combining command, PowerShell, and any uh, terminal in into your Linux distributions. You can just get it from GitHub if you want to contribute. You can get it from the store, uh, or you just download the latest release. Uh, now, a short introduction into Docker. Um, I just assume that nobody, that people here don't know anything about it. Um, it took me some time to get a grip on the terminology, and it's kind of nice to try uh, to at least understand what's being done as soon as you want to venture outside of the uh, common paths. Now, there's many ways to run Docker containers or projects, uh, but I'm not one to use uh, convoluted CLI commands uh, like Docker, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, then type uh, two uh, full lines in a terminal and then hope I didn't make a typo. Uh, rather for a project, I will be using uh, uh, Docker Compose, a, a typo, configuration files, um, which are more readable, uh, are easily transferable and serve the same definition, uh, same purpose, sorry. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you some loose definitions Emphasis on loose. Uh, they're not meant to be a scientific and watertight, but they should give you a uh, good idea of the concepts that we are dealing with. Uh, let's start with the service. Uh, in Docker, a service, uh, services are managed by Juma. Um, a service defines how you run your application container. We'll come back to the container so that there could be a service for the Joomla website, that could be a service for the database, that could be a service for a mail catcher, uh, that could be a service for a database viewer, just about anything is done. And services themselves can be combined in, in a project. <clears throat> can be combined in a project. A project is a collection of services and uh, they are typically defined by a docker-compose.yaml file. Uh, we'll see uh, lots of those uh, later. Then we have the concept of a container. A container is a runtime instance of a Docker image, uh, where a Docker image 
is the actual file snapshot uh, that is uh, used to execute code uh, in or as a container. Uh, you might possibly uh, compare uh, a uh, Docker image to uh, an executable app uh, application. To bring this a bit more into the uh, realm that we all understand, um, on the project level, we have a website. A website in a basic uh, uh, setup could contain three services. That's your Joomla web host. That is the database that could be uh, MySQL, Maria, uh, what have you not. Uh, and okay, jumping back, Joomla would then be a combination of PHP uh, and uh, uh, the web server, either Apache, uh, uh, Nginx, uh, whatever. And optionally, a database viewer. So this collection of services. Uh, can be used to spin up a website and spin it down. Uh, a service is dependent, uh, uh, creates uh, a container. Now the container name uh, is uh, randomized so that you can't have, uh, uh, because you can't have uh, the same container name uh, if you spin up multiple websites. So, well, Juma one, perfectly legal name, database one, and database viewer one. And another, spinning up another uh, website could possibly result in database two and database viewer two, whatever, something. There's just randomizing features in setting that up. Now, each container could then be based on, in this example, Joomla, Joomla three, and PHP version seven. But four. This database container in the example shown will be based on MySQL 5.6. And the database viewer will come to see uh, is used on PHP My Admin. Yes, I know there's better tools available, and I would not uh, be recommending this other than for just casual uh, hacking around, starting uh, disabling all system plugins or stuff like that and then move to some similar uh, sensible tool outside either from PHP Storm or MySQL Workbench or well there's tons of them. Um, anyway, uh, it's not all, all that glitters is not gold so there are def definitely some uh, drawbacks. Uh, we are adding an extra layer and that's what still sets it apart uh, from your typical Linux uh, development. <clears throat> uh, in that layer, we typically would be running a development IDE, PHP Storm, in my case, on the Windows level. Uh, and <clears throat> the pain in that is, is that we have to deal with privileges, file privileges, access privileges on three levels. On the level of Windows, on the level of the Linux distribution in Docker that you're using, so in my case, Ubuntu, <clears throat> and the files inside your project exposed to Windows, uh, defined by your service or container. Uh, we'll come to address that in the examples to follow. Now let's look at a basic Joomla Docker project. Uh, nothing fancy, no reverse proxies, no nothing. <clears throat> uh, as we suggested, a project is defined in a compose file. And on the right hand far side, you see a basic compose file, only for Joomla and for the database. And you see all kinds of numbers, and we're going to tag through this file to highlight the meaning of those numbers. <clears throat> so at the zero level, because obviously I forgot the important part uh, after I started with one, so I added zero. Uh, I didn't have to go to minus one. Uh, in this example, we have two services defined, Joomla at zero and Joomla DB. 
Joomlab being the website uh, and DB being the database. Uh, now servers are arbitrary names that you assign that are used to identify the running container. Uh, these services are also the DNS names used to communicate between those services. Well, let's start with the image. <clears throat> I've based this example on uh, the official Joomla Docker image. Um, and you can find them on the Docker Hub. You just Google it. Uh, and in the documentation, there's typically a lot of explanation about uh, the variable environment variables used, uh, the Docker configuration, how to set it up, uh, stuff like that. But just to give a small snapshot of the available Docker images that we have here. So you see here PHP 7.2 Apache, uh, PHP 7.2 Apache FPM. Uh, well, so there's a lot of things to choose from, and you just enter the uh, the one that you want to use after the uh, after the one. Now I would suggest that you first start with its basic Apache uh, image, as I've shown here. And once you've mastered that, you can move on to do more intricate stuff. <clears throat> uh, then we have uh, on the two and three. We have the links. Uh, the links we can instruct one service to be connected to a second one. So in the two in the Joomla section, you see it links to J4DB, which is the name of the service and also has an alias by SQL. Uh, so these two can talk to each other. Joomla can now talk to J4DB. <clears throat> And for that talking to happen, uh, they will use a network. Coming to that. By default, Docker will create a network for a project, an internal network. So that's only visible to the services inside a project. Um, I personally find it uh, more readable to specify this internal network, so hence, I call the data. And so now Joomla can talk to the database specified on the two using the host name J4DB specified on the three. So we are communicating, we have liftoff. Uh, well, there's no good if we can't see what's happening. Uh, because it's not good if all that happens in a container stays in that container. <clears throat> to make a container available slash visible, we have to export ports. And that's mentioned on the item five, where we see ports 80, uh, semicolon 80. So that means that the internal port on the right hand side, port 80, is mapped to the outside port 80. If you do that, then you can access that web server just from your local host 127.0.0.1. And if you only have one project, that's fine. Obviously, it's not going to work if you have multiple uh, projects that all want to talk on port 80 because then your web server on your uh, Windows site will be lost. <clears throat> And that's where later the reverse proxy comes in, unless you make a different port mapping where you see port 80 goes to 8133, whatever something. And then you can specify 12700.1 colon and then the port number. But I think that's quite a hassle, I don't like that. Volumes, as mentioned on the six. If you stop a service, yeah, well, you just do just that. Uh, containers get stopped, uh, nothing gets lost. Bringing down a server will stop the container and remove them. Uh, so uh, that's important. Why? Because all the changes inside the Docker container, if you don't do something special, will be lost. If you set up a database, make changes to it, 
and leave it inside of the database container. After bringing it down, the files will be lost and you start anew. <clears throat> now the volumes allow uh, files from your container uh, to be mapped outside of the container space. So uh, look at the items number six, um, where you can see that uh, in our example, var slash www slash HTML, that's inside in the container, and obviously the uh, var lib MySQL files from the database are mapped outside. Uh, in my example, they are host, ho, uh, they're mapped into home Marco v host j 4 dev uh, slash ww and j 4 dev slash db. We'll get back to my setup, uh, uh, proposed setup. Uh, the rw means that they are readable, writable. You can also make them uh, readable only. Uh, anyhow, it means that the data will live uh, outside of the Docker container and it will survive bringing it down. It will si uh, survive a reboot. Um, the environment number seven. Um, to control the settings of a container, we have to pass in variables through the environment. So for example, Joomla DB host allows to inform the Joomla container to know which database to connect to. Um, uh, to create the user table, etc. Now, more specifically, uh, this these variables are used in the script uh, of our Joomla uh, image uh, to create the tables in the database uh, itself. Um, so it's only needed for backup uh, for the initial instantiation. On installing Joomla, you'll still need to go through the other hoops of telling it where the database is and which are the users. Now, uh, how did we set up in Windows? Now, um, there is uh, a mapping of the folder structure. Now, in Docker, uh, I am home Marco. Marco is my user on the Windows machine. And it translates virtually to the same user in Docker. On the Windows side, I can view those files through a special network, uh, which is called WSL dollar. Then I specify the distribution. So for what it's worth, I can have multiple distribution distributions uh, in WSL2. I can have Debian or whatever, or CentOS or whatever also available and try that. So there's a, an advantage in there uh, in trying stuff on different machines. And then I'm mapping to home Marco. Now, um, I started off and we can debate about the naming, but I started, okay, let's me put all my projects in the vhost, oops, in the vhost directory. Uh, which I, through my IDE, can access through WSL dollar Ubuntu blah home Marco vhost. So that works perfectly in Visual Studio Code, and it works perfectly in PHP Storm. Uh, now, throughout the examples, um, we uh, we will be using and depending on this setup. So. On the VOs, I have a number of projects. So j 4 dev that's the nightly build, uh, which you can get from GitHub and then do uh, Composer and uh, NPM, and then have a website. I have a project for MailLog, which is uh, a container that lets me uh, catch my mail without actually sending it. Then we have the reverse proxy, which we'll come to talk about, which is traffic um, to allow for the actual naming of stuff and uh, omitting ports. And uh, I have a setup uh, where I uh, uh, used to look at the workflow before it got 
merged uh, through a pull request. So looking a bit deeper, uh, we will see that I use www. You might remember that in the project. Uh, you might remember that from the volumes mapping some slides ago, as with db, which you can also uh, remember from the volume mapping. So this www is actually where I can see all of the PHP files um, that are on my web server. And in database, uh, it keeps a copy of all the uh, MySQL database files. Now there's some stuff that may well not be uh, appropriate. Uh, on occasion, I have a PHP any, which I map to the uh, additional any files directory inside of the container to add my own um, any uh, commands like uh, max upload file size and what have you not. Uh, then I have a, a config folder which I use for all kinds of configuration stuff. And I have my j for dev.iml uh, or yaml. Um, now, those that are still awake after uh, half an hour, Windows, but you said the project file should be docker compose uh, dot yaml. Now, well, it can be any name as long as you specify it when starting, stopping, and doing stuff to the container. Uh, so I'm not using the default name, but by convention, I'm using the name uh, of the folder uh, so that I can automate a number of things. Uh, now, if I want to go um, and address files uh, through their names, we have to make them available. Now, without having the access to an actual DNS server and putting them there, we can uh, add them to uh, uh, the local host files on the, <clears throat> on the Windows machine. And so for J4 dev, you will I, you could add 127.0.0.1, which is your local host, and then say, okay, well, that equals to j4dev.localhost, www.jdev.localhost, or db.j4dev.localhost. And even though they all point to the local host, the reverse proxy, which is to be introduced, can differentiate uh, between uh, them and route the information uh, to the correct service. Now, for Windows, I use a, an editor. Uh, it has to be run by elevate, uh, elevated privileges, otherwise you can't edit the host file. Uh, link is here. Uh, very basic uh, text thing, so you just open it and then paste that line for your uh, site in there. Um, now, at times, we need to talk back to your Windows host. Uh, consider xdebug, which wants to talk back to the host uh, to deliver back the uh, information of a debug request, which is the remote host. We'll come back to that later. Um, unfortunately, this IP changes on a reboot of Windows. Uh, now it can be easily be found out uh, in a terminal into uh, WSL, just type in tail minus one, so that's etc resolve of conf and then cop minus d minus f2, and it will get you the IP of your Windows thing. I'm still looking into um, hiding all this complexity, but yeah, that's for future stuff. For now, you have to do this to know which uh, IP address you're looking at. Uh, Mailhawk. Let's talk about sending mails. Um, well, uh, because when you want to uh, test uh, emailing without sending uh, actual email, we can add a, pro uh, a project uh, based on Mailhawk and we'll run through some of the specifics, but in the end, you will be able to monitor your mail 
by looking at HTTP mail.localhost, uh, which is defined under nine. And you can send mail from another container using SMTP mail colon colon one to five. Those two ports come from the documentation. So setting mail up, hug up, uh, obviously you, uh, with when you specify the image, which is mail up, mail hug, uh, you name the ser uh, name your service. Uh, that's how other uh, services or other containers uh, get to you. Uh, so uh, that's why you SMTP to mail, because that's the name of the service. And then you expose the port to send mail. Uh, the port uh, to uh, send the mail is not going through your proxy um, because that doesn't make any sense. If it's local uh, within uh, that uh, setup. Uh, now for the web access, as I said, we do not expose the web port directly. So typically you can see that on the four, uh, we could access it through port 8025, but yeah, that doesn't make, uh, yeah, makes for bad practice. Let's see that we can have the reverse proxy resolve that. And you can see it with eight, where it says HTTP uh, traffic, HTTP services, mail hub, load balancer, blah, 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 port 8025. Uh, and we are making uh, the interface uh, available uh, through nine, where we make it uh, look at mail with local host. Uh, just an advanced warning because that had me uh, baffled for quite some time. In eight and nine, you see after routers and services, you see mail log. Uh, that's the name of the route traffic names, uh, a route needs to be unique. It tells uh, traffic the reverse proxy, uh, how to handle the incoming request uh, uh, to which service it deliver, uh, to deliver it to. So it can, it can and must be unique. Let's look at the reverse proxy itself. And here we see this example. So HTTP domain first, Traffic routes is to the first service, uh, service two, second domain. Um, so I've been using traffic as a reverse proxy and load balancer for that matter. Now it's a very complex beast. Supporting Docker is only one of its options. It does Kubernetes, it does a gazillion of things. And uh, unfortunately, at first glance, at least to me, uh, not everything is uh, clear. Uh, and once you get to understand a few things, why didn't I understand that to begin with? But hey ho, I guess that's life and the difficulties of documenting something. Um, well, obviously, <coughs> installing traffic is the same thing as with all other uh, projects. Uh, we just take it from Docker Hub. So there's a traffic uh, project there. And we'll uh, go a bit through the points later. And once you've installed it, you can access your uh, dashboard at localhost.8080. And you see a snapshot there where you can see uh, the rules. Uh, so if my host is, uh, if we take the bottom one, j4 workflow underscore version three dot local host, uh, then the entry point is web, which is port 80, where it's looking for. Uh, and then we take the service Joomla workflow version three. Uh, there's a bit more information behind this, but you can really easily see what's happening. I just put in an error for J4 dev, where you can see, okay, well, it didn't resolve the host, so it doesn't know what to do. But continuing, um, <clears throat> traffic is, uh, has auto discovery. So uh, there's nothing that you really need to do because traffic listens to Docker. 
and that's specified on the tool where it uh, uh, it uh, gets the socket uh, where Docker uh, can be listened to. And thus it knows if a container starts, restarts, etc., and knows the stuff to do. Um, and now you might remember that we talked about network as an internal network inside a project. Uh, since traffic and mail log in the previous examples are different projects, they don't see each other projects until, until and unless we tell them to. So uh, for that, we have to create a network. I've called it traffic underscore web gateway. I'll probably change my mind for some time. And while well, you can see in the screenshot below uh, that uh, uh, which networks are available or at least part of them. Um, and that's that's it. The traffic underscore web gateway, uh, gateway uh, will be seen in a lot of uh, projects themselves. Which brings us to extending the Joomla project um, with a number of things, and amongst other things, traffic. Okay, here's a section from the elaborated uh, composer file. And um, we see some labels here. And labels, and they say traffic. Uh, so these are the ways for the container to communicate with traffic. Number one is where it specifies the host name. What do you want Joomla? To listen to where do you want the information to be routed to so in this example i say okay if i type in j4 workflow underscore v3 dot localhost i want this website to be addressed obviously i need to add that to the uh, the host files on the windows system uh, next we have to ensure that we are actually using the correct network because we have a uh, external network uh, that we want to address. So that's where line two comes in and says, okay, well, to communicate the Docker network is traffic underscore web gateway. And that's the one that I just named. Uh, so these need to match, otherwise it's a no-go. Uh, and obviously you need to specify the network traffic uh, in your section of networks, otherwise it doesn't help. And as we stated before, then external network has to be created manually. <clears throat> uh, item four, I'll come back to this again, uh, as I stated, the routes, uh, traffic HTTP routers, stated here as Joomla dash workflow underscore V3. That has to be unique uh, for a service. Um, the examples made it not look like it, so I bashed my head at some time, and it makes sense that it has to be unique, but you get very strange stuff happening if you have two Joomla things that use the same router, strangest things happen so be very careful about this um, i'm working on a script to automate uh, all of that and i'll share that later so your router name is unique and no other con active container can use it now you may see another change uh, instead of hard coding the passwords in the environment I've moved here to specifying uh, the passwords through a file. And that's where part of this config file comes in, which I mentioned earlier, where I specify a path config, the environment, and then web variables. And there's also one for DB variables. 
so I can just keep the composer file clean and keep the WASP passwords in a specific location. Now, guessing that uh, you're as, your mouth is as dry or your ears are as red as my mouth is dry from speaking, there's so much to type. Uh, so I uh, will be, and I haven't done that yet because I didn't have the time. I just barely finished uh, the presentation, put up the stuff on my GitHub as a project, Joomla Dev WSL2, where you will have um, full examples of uh, composer files and some scripting and the presentation. So don't despair. Um, there is help on the way. Um, yeah, to run your project, um, when you follow the convention and you are actually in your VHOS workflow, then oh, you can change to that and see that the base name is workflow three. And then I say Docker compose minus F and then take the YAML file based on that base name, the directory. And then if I type the command config, I can check if I made any errors in my configuration file. Always good to do error checking before actually committing. Um, uh, to bring up the container, uh, you can use the composer up minus D. Up brings it up, minus D runs it as a daemon in the background. Um, otherwise, it will get killed as soon as your terminal exits. Uh, you can see uh, which containers are running on the two Docker Compose PS. Uh, in this case, you see workflow underscore v3, j4db1, Joomla1. I uh, see the ones that I mentioned earlier uh, where they randomize the names. And obviously, you can check the logs uh, uh, because I'm uh, uh, sure things are going to go wrong. And if you do Docker Compose logs, you can see what happened uh, at any time and try and fix it. When you bring a container down, Docker Compose down, um, you do that when you change the project and you need to rebuild. So if you change your Docker Compose file, Docker Compose YAML file, you have to bring it down and reboot it again. Um, otherwise, the changes will not persist. Uh, and obviously, after bringing it down, you have to bring it up. And now there's a big but. Uh, to that, bringing it down, oops, sorry, bringing it down uh, is going to lose you any internal changes to the container. Uh, so either you have to make sure that your stuff is internal or you need to be willing to repair it. Just restarting a container is fine. Nothing will get lost. Uh, and you can either use the one to the start and then stop. Or you can use a restart. Uh, and you would typically do that in case if you uh, change something to your ini files and you would need to uh, uh, reboot your Apache server. Um, just easy to do it this way. You can also shell into your Docker container and do Apache control restart or whatever something. As always, there's multiple ways of doing stuff. Um, committing. Um, well, that's something that's left out of the documentation for Joomla, and uh, not quite sure why. Um, as I've discussed in, uh, at a number of times, the changes uh, to the internals of a container, uh, container can be persisted uh, using the Docker commit command. It actually makes a snapshot. So any changes internally, uh, uh, for example, if you're adding PHP extensions or Apache modules or who knows what, uh, you can just take a snapshot. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. So if you look at the uh, above, what would you? Uh, so uh, what would you do? Uh, you would first look at the processes running in your environment. So we see there's workflow underscore v3 underscore Joomla1 after Docker PS. 
Docker Compose PS. Then we do a Docker PS while we look for this specific container, workflow version three underscore Joomla. And then we get this nice hex number, which identifies the container. It's not available, unfortunately, for Docker Compose. And then we can say something like Docker commit. We specify the container and then we specify something new. So we specify a name. In this case, I said, okay, it's a J4 because the workflow is Joomla 4. I'm using Apache with PHP 7.4 and I tag it as workflow. And uh, after enter, Bob's your uncle. Now, uh, you can see, okay, which images do I have? I type in Docker images and lo and behold, we see a repository in the repository. We see Joomla for Apache and uh, with our PHP 7.4 as specified above with the tag workflow. Uh, now for those changes to take effect, uh, we have to change the image line in your Joomla service uh, to be Joomla for Apache PHP 7.4 workflow v3 or whatever you named it uh, now a uh, short look at the database uh, viewer um, as i said uh, i have this typically i have this section commented out but i can uh, uncomment it uh, uh, bring my container down and up again and then I will see, and uh, you can see with uh, um, where it says rules host, there's a db.j4dev.localhost. And uh, if uh, I obeyed all of the uh, other rules, I can just open that URL and it will show me uh, PHP me admin and it already opened uh, the appropriate database. So how easy is that? I just typically use it for very basic hacking, uh, disabling extensions, hacking a, a root password, whatever, something. Uh, but it's useful. Another tool I am very fond of is Xdebug. Uh, and you start seeing here that I'm running out of time, um, as I'm already here. So, um, yeah, when you want to use Xdebug uh, in your Docker, you first type Docker Compose minus L blah 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 xxuma dash pecko uh, install. Oh, it put it on one line. Uh, yeah, you no, you bash uh, you open a shell in your uh, container. That's the first. No, oh, That's the first line. Then you type pecko install xdebug and that will actually get uh, the executable for xdebug. It will mumble something that something needs to be added to the PHP any file, but there's a special helper function for that that's called docker php x enable xdebug and that will get you uh, uh, a um, docker php xdebug any file uh, with the correct send extension. Four more slides to go. Uh, obviously, to install xdebug uh, or to use xdebug, you need an xdebug ini file. So uh, to do that, uh, you first resolve uh, the remote host IP address uh, from your Docker environment. So you say uh, we've mentioned this before. You do tail blah 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 blah, blah. and that will get you the remote host IP that you have to enter here. Cool. Uh, so if you type a command cat larger equal blah 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 lesser lesser equal eug and then all of this then the file will get created with this content um, obviously afterwards you will have to restart uh, the web service um, so restart the project and or commit and then you're done uh, i have some material on setting up your browser but I didn't have time anymore. Well, I did a talk on this at some time. Um, so say goodbye to far, don't die. And here's the YouTube link to it. As a final 
note and maybe biggest uh, well uh, biggest pain in the ass uh, uh, we would want to uh, address the file privileges on the three levels so since we are user Marco um, and the uh, web server is uh, WW data uh, you might want to do some uh, follow these commands for these files and then uh, uh, well don't use the cut and the EOD that's wrong in this case uh, sorry uh, and then the privileges will be set and you can modify files and do the things that you want to do and your web server will run questions shortly for the finish line a gazillion <laughs> um but yes, sorry uh, it was a rat jesus um um um, um. So no, no, no real questions in the chat if I've monitored it correctly. Let me double check. But, uh, oh yeah, sorry, uh, I have correct myself. There is one real question. Uh, why oh. not Linux? <laughs> yeah, that's bar talk. So I'm not gonna. <laughs> so that, subjective matter. That that was Eve asking that. Uh, yes, yeah, obviously. Yeah. 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 Well, well, thanks go out to Rob and Llewellyn, who keep reminding me of the same thing of not wanting to do Ubuntu and do the other things. But uh, there's some other tools I like on the Windows that I can't have in uh, uh, in Linux. And what's the gazillion questions then? Those are your questions or? Uh, th 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 those are my questions. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, well, okay. We, well, we can do a separate uh, chat on that. I, I assume or so. I, yes. uh, okay. Yeah, I, I hope it was a bit interesting. And I know it was a lot and it was fast. Uh, so luckily you can play back in slow motion. Yeah, so I, I indeed I think it's 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 a lot of content in in not so much time. Um, I know. Oh, and sorry, one more serious question. Sorry, uh, um, question for Marco. So after showing us all this core tech for Windows, are you ready to move to a MacBook? Guess this. <laughs> guess guess who's asking that question? Uh, I'm not going to guess, but uh, as soon as I win the lottery, I might consider it. But yeah, well, chances of that happening. Yeah, no. Okay. And Docker sucks on Windows uh, on MacBook. I agreed. I agreed. It, 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 I ho ho wholeheartedly agree to that. Okay, so thanks, Marco, for for that uh, detailed insight into that very well developed, extremely complex yeah. setup. Um, I assume it took a while to figure that out. Uh, uh, yes, I've been playing with Docker for quite a while, but uh, yeah, doing it in the Windows and then when you think you know it and you start documenting it, uh, that's when the pain comes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because then you reiterate and oh, I didn't document that, and I have to think of that. And yeah, I hope this will contribute. And yeah, I, I I know that pain. Okay, um, we will now have a quick two to three minute break uh, to do the change over to the next speaker, uh, which will be uh, Kiara, um, and she's going to talk about how to be a faultless designer in web design, um, something uh, that I'll happily learn about. Um, thank you, Marco, for presenting. Um, enjoy your evening. I'll now grab a beer and then uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. So, thank okay. you. Later. Bye bye.